Welcome to Real Bass Lessons. Today I want to present another lesson on this big bass here. I know this is a challenge for a lot of people. Let's just jump into it too. We'll do a little bit of a technique stuff and then we'll do some uh, walking blues, some uh, jazz bass line. Cool. Obviously intonation is the biggest challenge. A real good way to practice that is just the fifth. them ringing together. Hear that pitch? Listen to this. Listen to this. You can hear exactly when I bring it into tune. Of course you can. Now that's not the challenge. Hearing intonation is not the challenge. Some people say you have to have a good ear to play the double bass, you know, on that fretless bass. Well, <laughs> everything helps with a good ear, but the truth is you have to practice so you develop a physical shape, a posture that is repeated and can be maintained. Watch this. Yes, as you can see, I'm playing this distance and then I'm trying to keep that same distance. So guess what? You need to keep your fingers close. Don't be doing this stuff. Sometimes people say, uh, when I make double bass, I'll say, Jim, I can't see which note you're playing. That's good. That's because I'm not doing this. So you have to practice to keep your hands nice and close, and it just takes the building strength. Let's try that again. Three, four. Play with me. Double stops. Oh, nice. Hear that fifth ring out? Now that comes from nothing but repetition. And my hand's already a little bit tired. That's because I don't play the bass very much anymore. Um, Everyone really underestimates how much physical repetition we need to do on this instrument to develop the strength and to develop that posture in the left hand. Let's go a step further. Let's do it here now. C to F to B flat to E flat. So I'm going to have to shift. Watch. Three, four. Good, before we go on, let me show you now. Here's how I think of that. Obviously, I've practiced a bunch to get this shape, you know, get to get this posture ac ac accurate. And then this one here, and then how do I know where this is? I replace a finger with a finger. I put this finger where that one was. And guess what? If I've maintained my posture, it's in tune. Let me do that a little bit. And now I'll also shift from this one. back to that C. Well, guess what? I am thinking of this finger here across and I'm replacing it there. So it's not just random. They have to be connected and we have to maintain that posture. Watch. Three, four. to do stuff like this. If you don't have to go above it, you just maintain that hand position. You catch your C with this one. It's all about learning hand position and some good fingering. There's endless, uh, uh, you know, books and lessons on that. If you want my advice or, you know, my method, I have a little book called uh, um, Strong Foundations. It's available on my website. Matter of fact, I'll put a picture of it here, okay? That's a fundamental book on, uh, you know, book one on double bass learning, to learn to play the double bass. Particularly, though, it's learning the double bass while coming from an electric bass background. <laughs> that was me. I played electric bass for a number of years, and I know a lot of you have too. And you try to play the double bass the same way, and it tends not to work. Okay? Let's do that exercise again. Get in and play with me now. So we're working on this fifth. And by the way, I tune it with the open. 
string as you can see. That fifth, that fifth, that fifth. There it is. So let's play it together. Three, four, just roots and fifths. Of repetition. Now, when you get that concept down of, of maintaining your hand position and uh, you replace your finger with the finger, so there's sort of connections, then I work on this around the cycle of four. It's the same way I do on electric bass, except I don't really start with the scales, I just start with the roots and fifths. there are use some open strings. Obviously we use open strings pretty much as much as we can on the double bass to help with that intonation. Just that big sound, okay? So that's just a little lesson on how to think about and how to start working on getting that posture. I want to repeat, it's going to take a lot more focused repetition practice to develop your posture and to develop the strength to maintain it. People are constantly going, Jim, it just uh, hurts, uh, you know, <laughs> a whole bunch when I do that. And, you know, I can't do it for very long. Well, that's repetition. It has to be exact repetition of a correct habit to create muscle memory. Okay? Let's go on to some jazz now. Did you see those fifths, that hand position? Sure, I maintained it when I was up here. Now the trick is though, you realize, <laughs> you know this, as we go up the bass, that distance of the fifth gets smaller, doesn't it? So guess what? There's no way to sort of plan it, you can simply have to practice it. It's no different than walking down the street and you just got a nice pace going and there's a crack there. Well, you don't have to stop and think about it. No, you just adjust your stride to step over it. When a really great basketball player is running down the court and he stops and pulls up, he doesn't think, I'm 23 feet away and I need X amount of pressure. No, he's run to that spot and shot many times before. Many, many, many thousands of times before with the exact same posture to create that muscle memory feeling. And you all know what I'm talking about. Um, it's like that sweet spot in the tennis ball. You keep hitting and hitting, all of a sudden it feels right, and then you do it over and over and over. By the way, that's a problem that many people have when practicing, they work and work and it's not right. And it's, you know, and they're trying to get it better. And then all of a sudden they get it right. And then they go, great, I'm done. No, you got to get it right. And then you have to do it so much that it develops that neurological response, that muscle memory we were talking about. Okay, cool. Now, um, everybody likes jazz blues language. Guess what? You need to copy some of the great stuff. I have all my students work and learn out of this book here. 
I know it says reading, but it is simply, uh, what is this? I think it's like 1,400 and some, uh, yeah, it's 1,442 two, uh, measures, 1,462 measures of blues. 12-bar blues, walking bass line, okay? I'm not going to teach you a walking bass line today, but I thought I'd play a couple of these just so you can uh, um, hear them. And you can, you're welcome to copy them. You can go copy some from Paul Chambers or Ron Carter, too. By the way, be sure you're using good models. <laughs> some people, you know, I, 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 I put up a PC line, and they'll say, yeah, Jimbo, what about? And they'll name a player that I've never heard of. Folks, copy really great players, okay? And by the way, this stuff here, this is really not me. I wrote the book. But this is m me copying, channeling great players, okay? Let's play a few courses here. I'll do two or three or four in a row. Just so you can sort of hear some of the language that I've learned over, you know, 50 years of copying the great players. Let's do it here. just playing out of this book but really what I want you to do is to memorize get yourself uh, you know transcribe a course of it or again you can copy some of the great players don't just uh, uh, tick pick random stuff though by the way let me explain that we don't just want to learn chords and theory and play over chord changes no we want to learn melodic shapes quarter note melodies that are iconic language that the great players used and then we want to work on those, and those become part of our jazz vocabulary. Okay? Hope that helps. Get into it. Fire it up. 